So, was Frank Welker ever considered for the role of Soundwave in Bumblebee? I have no idea. Okay. We all, like I said, there was multiple male actors that were there, and I think a lot of us read for some of the same roles, mm -hmm. as far as I know, and then they, they decided who was going to be what later on, but I have no idea. Okay. Good evening. It's afternoon. Okay, we have about... <laughs> <laughs> we have about seven minutes left. Uh, last call. Was there any voice that was incredibly hard to do that required a lot of work? Uh, and that, well, uh, actually, I didn't get to tell one quick thing about Soundwave. So he and I had a whole, Travis Knight and I had a whole conversation about Soundwave's vocoded voice and how they actually did all that. And they weren't sure at the time how they were going to do the effects for the voice. So he had me record that voice in different pitches in different ways in case they needed to mix it to whatever they could do to make it sound as close to the original as possible, which I thought that was just really cool of him. Um, and the other cool thing that I th I'm not sure if they did this for you or not, but for every character that we did Scratch for, Travis Knight had this cool little montage from all the, G from the G1 cartoons, a compilation of videos of that character speaking. It was just like two, two minutes or so of just Transformers cartoon on this big screen at Paramount Studios, I was just, it was so surreal as, as a Transformers fan. I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. Well, and, and I'm curious, did did Blitzwing ever speak before? He did. He did. Has he spoken before? Yeah. No, I wasn't shown anything. I couldn't remember his voice either, to be honest, though, because he didn't yeah. speak a lot. He, he very rarely. He was more there for the coolness factor of being able to change in multiple things. The hardest thing in this movie for me was when he was screaming, um, "Did you think you could hide?" That took almost a half I heard minute. you. I heard him from the other you room. Hear me from the I other was like, room. oh, he's in there hurting himself right now. <laughs> I could hear him like, rrr, rrr, rrr. I was like, oh, that's a throat ripper session. No, I, 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 I totally approach it like a theatrical character, and um, there's no cartoon to me. They're all people, real, on you know, yeah. live action characters to me. Um, that, that took us some time because I was, I was so intense with it. I'm not trying to brag, but I was so intense with it, I was seeing stars. I I've, I've done the same thing. So I would, I would do a couple of takes, and then we'd sit for a few minutes, and they'd do a couple of takes and sit for a few minutes until we got what we wanted. Yeah, I heard like bursts of like just yelling for like a minute and a half straight, and then complete silence, and then more yelling. I was like, they're going to tear me apart if I have to do any of this. No, I, I would stuff. never do these characters. I mean, that, that intense of, of, of a moment outside of the studio. Yeah. I don't blame you. My medical bills um, would be very high if I did that. I, I made the mistake for a while there. I was trying to do about six miles a day, and I'd done this crazy hike the day I recorded for God of mm -hmm. War 4. And I, I get down to the studio, and there, obviously with video games, there's always these efforts and stuff. But I had to be electrocuted, which is one I've done before. But I didn't think about the fact that I was still completely I wasn't I wasn't sore at the time because I'm just standing, you know. But when I act, I do the same thing. I'll get cramps in my ribs, and like I, I go full. When I'm at the st studio and I'm being paid to be there to do this, also it's I on go, a big screen too. I'm doing the, I'm giving thing. the full effort, and I did the shock, and I'm this great big. It's it's a very it's in the same zone as Optimus Prime's type voice, but this big Norse, it was a really hard. I had to speak ancient Norse. They flew a guy in from, from Norseland, or wherever Norse people speak, uh, to like show us how to accurately do it, because that's how God of War is like, they want to be very, very specific. And so he's this big voice, and he gets electrocuted. So I'm like, Wah! like shake, and all of a sudden all my muscles in my body seize up. I white it out. Everything went did white, you, and I fall? fell. I fell, wow. and I had the the motion capture thing on my. They're like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, I didn't think about that hike yesterday. That was, <laughs> that was probably the scariest." My friend Tadashi actually did completely pass out once. Yeah, that's a classic and story. The, yeah, the Hulk, playing the Hulk when he was recording the Hulk. <laughs> yeah, when I did Star Trek Into Darkness, um, playing um, the Klingon parts, uh, we had the fellow that invented the language there with us. Wow! And it was like a coaching session. He was standing right beside me in the booth cheering me on, um, and I don't speak Klingon, me neither. Uh, <laughs> but he was teaching me as I went, and, and uh, he would, like if it was Ukaki, I don't even know if that's Klingon, and it's Not supposed again. to be Ukakok, it has to be exactly right, because yeah. people know the language. They created a whole stinking language. That was that's fun. Tough. It was hard, it was fun. <laughs> The, the way I got the God of War, War job, they wrote everything out for us <laughs> in Norse. I'm like, I don't speak Norse. I can't even read it. They're using symbols I've never even seen before. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to I'm going to let my brain fill in the blanks and just act like I've been speaking this my whole life. And I just, it's not like for them, baby. And that was like, that's how I, I was like, man, this sounds like you've been speaking Norse your whole life. I'm like, I have no idea what I said. I just made a bunch of sounds that sounded Norse. <laughs> Some, sometimes. 
gibberish languages, they don't care that much. They just say, make it sort of sound like yeah. this, and then they're happy. My, my trick is to find anything in the room to read and just read it backwards in whatever character I'm doing. Okay. And it totally sounds like a totally different language, and nobody knows that I'm just, they're like, you made all that up all the time. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> we got on tangents, but we don't know if you last sometimes.